Hello, Paul. Sorry, how are you doing? I'm good, yeah. It's all out the phone. How are you? How are you? How's your day gone? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, sort of a uh, bit, bit, bit stressy. I'm like, I've got, I've had so much on today, like meetings and like, you know, we we done another podcast earlier and and all stuff like that. And I was rushing around like a lunatic. My mum, mum and dad have got an annex um, next door. I got an annex on where, where I live, mm. and they live next door. But they're around. They got a spare key. So I'm rushing around. I had a meeting at half two in Tunbridge Wells. Got out the door at two o'clock. Went to check my pockets. Bloody locked my, all my keys in. So, so I had to, um, ah, so my mum and dad were like half an hour away. So I had to cancel the meeting and I'm, I'm out, outside with slippers on it. Oh, it's just, oh, just doing, doing my head in. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Sometimes it happens. Mate, it's one of them days, right? Yeah, it has been one of them days. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to fit everything in. I've got another meeting at seven o'clock tonight. Yeah. regarding the, the local football team that I'm going to take over. Um, and we've got a meeting tonight regarding what we're going to look to do and how, how far we want to push it and all the rest of it, really. Yeah, fair because there's it's definitely, definitely potential there. But, oh, that's uh, good to hear. Good to hear. Man. Yeah, what, what about you? What, you good day? Uh, yeah, been busy, really. I um, went into the office, sorted a few things out. Um, might be getting a uh, one of my players to a football club at the moment. Um, in talks at the moment with that. And yeah, just like I say, just constantly on the phone speaking to um, a lot of people, just sorting out cars and holidays as well. It's just, yeah, it's manic, mate. Yeah. It's, it's mental, but it's good. It's all good. I'd rather be working, not working, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. And you're, yeah, I'd rather be busy than not busy. Yeah, definitely mm. right. It's, just waiting for Cal to come on. I, I did say quarter two to him, so. Oh, no worries. I, uh, I was late last time, wasn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so. Um, the, it looks like the live stream's going to be sorted, doesn't it, for the, the game? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think literally last minute then, weren't we, we were talking about it, and it'll be good. Um, I think that'll be, that'll be key, and I think it'll be really, really awesome for people to uh, to watch it and, and be part of it. It'll be, uh, it'll be a good day. Yeah, definitely. They're going to do it as a, mm. for a tenner now, aren't they, which I think's better. I, th I think that's fair for everyone to, to see that, with you know, with, with, with it obviously dropping down 15 to £10. It, it, you know, more people will obviously want to... Uh, join in and pay for that rather than the fifteen pound which would be good. Yeah, no, definitely right. Definitely. You, you know, um are you you looking for youngsters? There's I've got a couple of youngsters who I've I've watched just recently. Um that that they, they, they're decent. Very, very good. And I think they've got a chance. because um, I've put a few I've put a few youngsters going through into pro clubs and stuff like that. But that's obviously what you do and if they can come through you then yeah, even, even better. Well, no, exactly. So over last year, I've taken um, two boys from Sudbury. Um, Sudbury, obviously, in step four, is up in Suffolk Way. One to Bradford and then one to Cambridge. Um, very good players. Like I said, one was 18, one was 20. Liam Bennett at Cambridge and Tyler French. Ty Tyler French, sorry, went to Bradford. He's, he's at Wrexham now. But two lads, like I say, have gone, you know, they got released at, what was it, maybe 15, 16 from pro level. When I played non league yeah. football, enjoyed it. And like you say, between 16 and 19, it doesn't matter the stand. If you're playing football regularly all the time, <laughs> look at Ben White jumping in there. Grandpa, love you. <laughs> love you, Ben. Is it? What a guy. Is that actually Ben, Ben? Is that Ben White? Ben White. Ben White. The legend who's obviously in England now. Should be playing for England. Really? Yeah, quality. Hello, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're quality, <laughs> by the way. Honey, I'm really... I'll be a great I'm, I'm moisturised. Ben, you killed me there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's probably talking about me. <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, yeah. I just said to the boys that no matter the standards you're playing, if you're playing, if you're playing regularly football against men and you're doing well, people come and watch you. Um, I, think, yeah. I think that's the main thing. Them, them boys there proved that there's talent out there in non-league football if you're young. Um, I've, I've always been this age where no matter the standards, you've got to go and play football. You've got to play first in football, yeah. whether you drop down the leagues or whatever. You've just got to um, you've just got to play football as much as you can because that's how you get recognised. You, as soon as you don't, as soon as you obviously don't sit on the bench or you're not in the squad, people forget about you. Hundred percent. That's all. That's all I say to the to the lads. You know, even if you drop down a level and you're playing regularly, mm -hmm. you know, do that. You know, you know, sometimes you have to take one step back to take two forward. You know, yeah. that's 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 the way it is. But um, exactly. we've yeah. all we've all been there where, like you say, you you get rejected or say that you're not good enough or so and it's, it's how you take that rejection. Uh, you, you turn it into yeah. a positive to think, well, it's one person's opinion. And that's, listen, that's ultimately, that's what football's about, isn't it? You know, people's opinions. Listen, we've got yeah. arguably, you know, the best manager that we've ever had for England. 
and he picks a team mm. last week and half the nation is is battering and saying what what we're doing and it's like you say his yeah. opinions and it's turned out to be the best thing that we've done. So um it's 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 football's madness, isn't it, opinions? Yeah, no, it is every, everybody says a different thing. I mean some some of the names I get called because I've had my own opinion, you know. Mm. And it's just, you know, come on, lads, just settle down. Everybody's got their own opinion and that's what football is a football's about. Exactly. So exactly. Definitely. Here he is. Hello, Cal. How we doing, Simon? Cal. I'm bad, thank you. How are you, mate? Yeah, how's your day gone? Not bad. We've got a new pet, three new pairs of goalkeeper gloves. Very nice. What, can we see them? Of course you can. Well, first, I should. Uh, I told Simon this. I got a little glove. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> a little key ring. <laughs> Oh, too, um, my hands are too big. I, I, thought, I, thought that, I thought they got your size wrong, Cal. Oh. Well, there you go. Here's the first pair. Very nice. By one, they're called. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah nice colour. Then It's like a galaxy colour. Yeah, they look nice. These are my favourite pair, because it's the colour. Got these ones. Purple oh, okay. kind of. Okay, purple, there you yeah. Go. Oh, nice! Christ, I think, don't don't play with them under floodlights, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, be two massive lights in the goal. Whoa, what's going on? Here you go. Uh, here you go. Pure yeah. white. They've got no chance of staying uh, clean, have they? That's right. the problem with white gloves. Yeah, that's the I, one I, problem with them. I have the problem with that with white boots. I I, I used to uh, halfway. What was it from like twenty years like oh, like twenty five onwards? I used to wear white boots all the time. I just love white boots, and like you say, after a couple of wears, they go to and to like a a creamy sort of white, you know, like a, a gone off colour, and yeah. they just don't look the same. The same with gloves. But it is one for you, right? So when I was at Wickham, Cal, right, we had a goalie coach called Baz Richardson. He's the goalie coach of Hull City Football Club now, and oh, yeah. he picked the the goalie strip for obviously for for Wickham. So, but, so his idea was. I'm going to make it the most colourful thing ever because we have Matt Ingram in goal, who's the whole manager, the whole goalkeeper now. He's massive. He's six foot five. Do you know I mean, big, big wardrobe, we called him. And he, we, we obviously made all the, all the colours of the rainbow all across him sort of thing. He said his idea was, is when a player goes through one-on-one -on -one with a keeper, if you've got these big colours glaring at you, it might slightly put you off. And that was yeah. the, 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 the It was awful. The colours were awful and he had to wear it every home game. But <laughs> the idea was trying to put the other team off with it. Well, it makes it makes sense. I mean, them purple gloves. Can you imagine if you're running through and then you're holding them big purple gloves? Big hands, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be looking at that, aren't you? you know what I mean? having, hang on, I put them on now. And I'll, I'll, I'll show there you go. You, you have to wear them in, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> they're quite they're very That's easy true. to put on. The, do, should I tell you what size gloves I am? Go on, go on. Ten. Is it, I wouldn't would know any different. That's quite big, isn't it? It's quite a big glove size, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember when my boy was in goal for a while. He's come yeah. out now, but he was, I think he was size six when he was, um, what did it must have been, maybe like 13 or whatever he was. So I know obviously going up, it's obviously quite, um, not a reasonably good size. There you go, so doing that. Yeah, there you go. Look, oh, can you imagine that? Looking at that. I so say, you've got that Especially with... in goal. You know, penalty, if there's a penalty against you, you've got your big gloves up. Yeah. But like a traffic light, stop there. <laughs> yeah. With, with the floodlights, I mean, definitely. You got the glove sand, that. Yeah. That's that's the one for brand new stuff, isn't it? Yeah, you get that very nice um, you know, sticky substance on it. Yeah. Before well, I use gloves, before I use gloves, I um I don't um, use them straight away. Like uh, I don't just use them when they're straight new. What I do is clean the, you know, the front of the glove with water, just to, you know, just to settle the latex. Yeah. Okay. okay. Makes it last longer. Okay, that's interesting. We um, there was a, f a thing where uh, again, Babridge and the goalkeeper coach, he he taught that you put Vaseline on the on the palms of your hands for when yeah, you're tried that and it works. Yeah, he said it, it really works, and obviously you can he, the grip or whatever it was. I just it baffled me, like the, the sort of the. It did me. Do you know what I mean? I, I put vaccine on my boots. I got subbed off early doors. Yeah. All kept going away from me. <laughs> but that's what I'm thinking. You got vaseline on your gloves. Surely it'll slip out your hands, wouldn't it? I, I, something to do with like the brand new texture. I, I, I didn't really get it. Like he went into D out, and I switched off. So 
It's uh, <laughs> no, that, that, that is a great guy. That great guy. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Oh, dear. Do you know who's on just a minute ago? Because um, Paul knows him. Who was that? Yeah, ben White. You just missed Ben White. You joking? No. 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 Seriously, Ben White. Yeah. But he, he, he insulted me though. Yeah. He he said Grandpa's on. How bad is that? <laughs> <Hey>? <laughs> <laughs> He's got nothing better to do but then to watch it, me, eh? That, yeah. he's, 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 a, he's a great guy, Ben. Lovely man, lovely boy. Got, he is. I knew, yeah. I knew straight away the guy was going to go places. He's, he was just, he was just too good instantly. And the moves that he's had from Newport to Peterborough to Leeds, he just, he went for strength to strength. Like he says, his ability was second to none. You can tell that he was a, the, the best of the, the better, the best defender in that league at the time. And then he moved up, and he's, <laughs> but he's just so. Do you know what I mean? He just takes it as it is as well. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't really take criticism, mm -hmm. to, you know, to heart. Do you know what I mean? He just gets on with it. He, He's, he's a bizarre lad. Like, he's just, just nice, mate. He's a nice boy as well. I'm glad for him. Yeah. He's a quality player. And what I like about him, he's so composed. Mm. You know, oh, yeah. uh, he's, he reminds me, uh, you know, I know they, they are different players, but Van Dyke. Van Dyke's composed on the ball. He never panics. You know, you watch Van Dyke. I went and watched Van Dyke live and I was watching him most of the game. He hardly moved. Mm. I mean, he, he, did, he didn't even sweat. He just knew exactly where to be. Every time he got the ball, he just laid it off. And he, he just hardly moved, you know what yeah. I mean? Was, and, and supposedly, he's supposed to smell lovely as well. So, so <laughs> Troy Deeney said, have you not seen Troy Deeney, what he said about how, how he hates playing against him, he's so strong and quick and that. He said, but worst of all, he, he smells so nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Cool. When he said that in the, uh, in the press, it was funny. But, um, yeah. Uh, cry. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, that's right brilliant. We, 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 we started. I think we. I think we should start the podcast off from when Ben White come on. I reckon. I mean, that would, that would go well. <laughs> oh, ben White at the same time. Oh God, yeah. Get Ben White. Oh God, you imagine? Did you can talk about him? a possible can, move. Can we get him on? God, I would love to get Ben White on. Christ, that'd be mental. Yeah. No, yeah. we will. We'll try. Yeah, brilliant. Right, and Carol, you got any got any questions there for Paul? <laughs> Um, you trying to gloves on? I know he is. Yeah, he's, he's, uh... I'm just trying the white ones on. I haven't tried them on yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will dear. warn you; they do blind you a bit. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, Paul. No, I'm going to ask you something. Actually, um, who, who's your? I mean, obviously, you've played in some brilliant sides, and you've had a great career, and all the rest of it. Who, who's your um, favourite manager been, and, and why? And why would you say? Favorite yeah. manager? Oh, okay. Um, I probably would have always said Nigel Atkins, um, the Charlton manager. Now, he um, ironically, so Nigel. So when I got released at Norwich when I was nineteen, I went up to Scunthorpe on trial, and I got myself obviously a, a scholarship stroke, obviously pro. And uh, Nigel was the physio then at the time, mm. so he he was the physio. Um, Brian Laws was the manager and stuff, and Russell Wilcox was the assistant, and. Um, but it was unusual because he had been, he's been a manager in Wales, I think was before. Um, yeah. But he wasn't just a normal physio. He, he got involved with the warm ups. He got involved with the, he was a goalie coach as well. Um, but very, very intelligent man and have his little say. But at the time it was like, well, it's a physio. I mean, I'm going to take too much notice to him. Um, mm. And then obviously Brian Laws left. He went, I think he went to Sheffield Wednesday or he moved on. And, um, Burnley, I think it was actually, and then um, Nigel sort of steadied the ship. I wasn't there at the time. I, I left and, and went to um, Barnsley at the time, and uh, I can't obviously. Uh, my contract was up, and then Nigel phoned me and said, "Would you fancy coming back to Stumble?" And I was like, "Yeah, definitely. I'd love to come back to Stumble. No worries." So we sorted it out, and um, it was a bit, I, a bit surreal, really, because Nigel, when I left, was my physio, and now he's obviously first team manager. But as yeah. soon, as I, soon as I walked in the door, he's he was he was brilliant. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've never met a guy who's the man management skills were is the best. I like to, yeah. listen. Gaz Ainsworth at Wickham is is up there. Do you know what I mean the way that he he talks to the boys and then he obviously respects the boys. He looks you know he looks after them. But I say Nigel just you know we had Jack Cork on loan from Burnley. Uh, so Jack was mm -hmm. only nineteen. He's come up from Chelsea. A like young lad, never lived away from home at all. And we'd have lunch and stuff. And Jack would sit at the table and Nigel would just go and sit next to him. And have, have some lunch and just talk to him and just say, how's the family? Are you finally living up here? Do you know what I mean? Have you gone to visit this? Have you done that? How's your, yeah. you know, how's, how's your mum and dad? How's, um, you know, and he'll find out about yourself as an individual. Yeah. And he just said that, you know, the more you can find out about your players, the better you'll be. And he just, 
he just sunk into it. And like you say, Jack was 19. Like you say, he's, no one knew him at the time. He just obviously come in and spoke to him. But he would speak to Jack as much as he would do speak to the senior boys. Uh, yeah. You know I mean? Whether it was Ian, Ian Barrowclough, who's the um, Northern Ireland manager at the time now. Mm. So, so Barrow's there at 35 and, and Nigel would just talk to him like normally as he would do to Jack. And it was just, it's just surreal. Do you know what I mean? You don't really get too many managers that do that. Uh, like yeah. I say, mm. it, we would have debriefs a game afterwards on a Monday. Uh, we'll talk about it. We'll let, we'll let everyone else talk. You know, have their little say. Um, but it was just such a positive, positive man. Um, intelligent, positive, nice to work with. And, and it just allowed me to, to play my, the way that I wanted to play. And it, and it really it really benefited the way I played. And I say, I, I think Nigel, for me, was the, was the best manager I've ever worked under. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. A lot of managers manage the team. They don't manage the players. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it makes so much difference. It's, um, every player is different. You know, you... you one one player needs a kick out the backside, don't they? And an erotic in every now and again. And another player, you, you need to put your arm around him and tell him how good he is and how fantastic he is. I mean, they're all, every player is different. And not the, all the successful managers, I think, are the ones that, you know, do care about everybody individually, like Pep and, yeah. you know, Jose Mourinho when he was on form and, and, play, and managers like that. I, I totally agree. Um, I think that's really, really important. It is. And I think, like, you know, Back, you know, a little, little bit then, but like way back then, sort of um, mental health and people's feelings weren't too much concerned about. When now it's, mm. it has to be. And um, yeah, and managers now, like, you know, we, I was talking to, um, I think Danny Kebwell actually, um, talking to him about, you know, managers and coaches should go on courses for mental health and for feelings, yeah. and for, uh, you know, for that. Because, it, you know, managers ain't just managers anymore. They are mentors. They are you know, the, the footballing dad of, of the family of that club where yeah. they should, you know, players should be able to go to to speak to if there's anything at all on or off the field. And, you know, it never yeah. used to be, but like I say, with Nigel and, and with Gareth Ainsworth, it was always, if you needed to speak to them about anything, anything at all, they would they would give up their time to speak to you or phone you. Um, like I say, a lot of other managers that I play for wouldn't give you time or day for that. They're not interested, uh, very arrogant and stuff, but, but them, them two were, were, were spot on and us where you can tell with players the way that they play, like you say, playing to their potential, yeah. like you say, as, as Wickham now, gone right the way up to the Championship, which is, you know, shouldn't have happened. Scunthorpe, the way we went up to the Championship, say that shouldn't have happened with the size of the club, the players that you had, the personnel, but it's the manager that drives it. It's the manager, mm -hmm. the pinnacle, the ones that drive it. And like you look, mm -hmm. you look at Pep, like, you know, he rarely gets a player that comes in that doesn't do well. Yeah, yeah. Comes in, like, loves him. There's not many people that slug him off or batter him or anything like that. He's, no. he's, he's good and it just it shows that the, the man and the human being that they are. I mean, you, what you're doing with your job, you know, um, obviously with the players and all the rest of it, it's very similar to what you're doing, really being an agent, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to notice that now with agency. It's, um, you know, back in the day, it used to just be your agent's just done, your, you know, done the contract and spoke to a few clubs, that's it, where. Like now, like I've, obviously I've got what probably about ten, twelve boys on my books. Um, I say to them that you know I'm not just obviously your agent, but I'm your sort of your mentor, your guide. Um, you know, I mean, you sort of footballing man that you can speak to me about if it's away from your family, if it's away from football, it's anything. It's it's a it's a full time you know job in a way to to make sure that all the players are looked after. Because if you can't trust yeah. your agent, you can't trust anyone. Because yeah, exactly. you know, I, I had some bad dealers with agents in, in the past. Um, I had an agent that uh, took money off me and lied to me. I had another, I had another agency that neglected me, didn't really speak to me at all. And then I, I become obviously a, a last agent called Paul Hart. I don't know if you, um, uh, Jamie Hart, sorry, Paul Hart's son. He's the assistant manager of um, uh, Blake Norrie. He's the old Paul's manager. Um, oh. Jamie, he, he looked after me for seven years and then he become a real good friend. Comes to my third mm. birthday party. Like, so he really looked out and I could trust him. And that's the biggest thing. If you can't trust someone, then you got problems. So there's there's a lot of people in the football industry, I'd say, that are snakes, backstabbers, liars, manipulators, yeah. horrible people. Right. Um, I've always said it's probably the most individual sport as a team game ever. Like you just there's too many mm -hmm. people in it for themselves. Um, which you, yeah, I get it to a degree you have to be, but there's just so many lies and stuff like that. And it's um, like you say, with myself with the agency, I, you can't do that to the boys now. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've learned from the best from Nigel and Gaz how, how they look after yeah. you and stuff. And you learn from, like you say, the best of the pep. Um, that just Everyone's human beings. Everyone's exactly the same. Doesn't matter what money you're on or who you are. Just try and treat everyone the same.
Yeah, 100%. So I think it's really, really important. Mm. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Gary, you got any got questions there now? Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, so, uh, so, so when you were talking about Wickham, mm. right, um, if they had to, if they didn't uh, get you, where would you think you would have gone instead of Wickham if you, if, if you didn't go to Wickham? Um, good question. Do you know what? Obviously, I, I'll just go for when I sort of teed it up myself really early on when I spoke to, to Gaz about it. Um, you know what? I, I think it probably been my only time in my career where I wouldn't have maybe known where I would have gone, really, if I'm honest, Carl. I think, um, I think it would have been a case of just sort of waiting around and just seeing what my agent would have maybe done for me or what I could have done. It would have had to have been, it would have had to been southern based because I obviously have my my kids and stuff uh, living with me. Um, but I really don't know. It probably, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't answer that. There was, listen, there wasn't many people queuing up for me, put it that way. So <laughs> it, it was kind of either Wickham or uh, then I put out to get a job. <laughs> I bet they regret it after, so after you went there. Who's that? <laughs> I said the other teams, I bet they regret it after you went there. <laughs> I don't know. People, you know, like I say, I, I left Scunthorpe when they got promoted that time and then I went down to, to Wickham. Wickham were really, really struggling financially with players. Uh, they nearly got relegated the season before and like I say, it was it was really of a contrast where it was favourites to go down lo third lowest paid club in, in the in League 2 and then we got to the player final and lost on penalties. So we, um, again, like you say, sometimes it's the money don't obviously make results. It's, it's, a, it's the team, obviously, what they do. And we represented the manager on the field and like I say, it was, it was a lovely club and I was glad that Gaz obviously got me involved with the club and it was nice. Hmm. Yeah, good. Brilliant. Good question. Yeah. I just thought of it anyway. That's, that's a really good question. I've never been asked that one before. I'm the first. <laughs> um, yeah. If, if you had to say a club that you, you really didn't like it there, where would you say? What club I did? You didn't uh, really... You know, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably the the club where I found it really difficult was probably Brentford. I think mm -hmm. I still I still had two years left at Cholton, and um, they wanted to get rid of me. And Brentford went out their way to, to sign me with Uwe Rosler. When I met him, it sounded really really good. Obviously, you know, face to face and stuff, and what he wanted to do and stuff. And um, yeah, I went in there, and after first few weeks I had the feeling where I'm not really getting much satisfaction here from the manager I'm not really getting much answers sort of a little bit neglected a little bit and um, yeah I think I struggled really I think the, the travelling obviously it took me two to two and a half hours every day to get to training and, get, and then obviously get back so it was a five hour mm. round trip and um, I didn't really play much I didn't really like the me and the manager didn't see eye to eye really and it was it become a little bit nasty in the end. And, um, yeah, I, I found it difficult really playing for, for Brentford. The fans didn't really take to me because I weren't really, weren't really playing. And when I did play, I didn't, obviously, it took me a while to, to score a goal. So, um, I don't regret my time because there were some lovely people behind the scenes. Um, and like you say, they're a successful team. But I think for me personally, probably my, my you know, club where I didn't really perform or do well at was probably Brentford. Yeah. Uh, last one for me, and then if you've got another one, Simon, that's fine. Um, yeah. uh, best goal you scored, and which club? Which which club was it for? All right, so I've been asked this before, and it's um, obviously scored a couple. You know, some nice goals, really. Like scored against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge when I was twenty-one. For, for mm. So you know that that was that was really really. Uh, I was at twenty-one. It was a bit surreal, really. Um, I scored a two goals against Tottenham. Which was uh, ironically, I don't think I was supposed to play that game either. But Gaz obviously chucked me in last minute. We had an injury sort of building up to that, and he didn't know if he was going to play and stuff. But Gaz stuck with me and played me, which I wasn't really playing well at the time. And I scored the two goals. Um, I'd, and obviously, I scored two goals against Man City. It was, listen, I'll probably say my volley against Tottenham purely because the occasion and, and the technique of my left foot that went in the top corner. It was that, yeah. that, that is probably the, the the best one. Have you seen it? I've seen the goal. Good. Uh, I don't know if you've I seen goal, it. I wouldn't go anywhere near it. Would you, would you call <laughs> it, yeah? I don't think I would have seen it coming. <laughs> I've so, been that, that, been that's been being on it. Too many points. Are we, are we going to see a goal like that from you, Cal, coming up soon? 
Well, yeah, because I've joined a new club, yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. Yeah, congratulations about that on the way. Well done. Yeah, um, they just um, they just uh, messaged me on Instagram called Codner Athletic. They uh, play in uh, the QTS um, Division 2. And they uh, are pushing for the title this season. Mm. And they, need, they said they needed a striker that's uh, clinical under pressure. And I said, I'm definitely that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they, they, they've put me under pressure already. They say I'm their penalty taker already. Right, OK. I'm going to be their free kick taker. And I'm going to be their corner taker. OK, so you're going to be like the Harry Kane was in the, um, was it in the last World Cup when he put on everything? Is yeah, right? that's it. Yeah, I'm everything on it. I couldn't understand that. Harry Kane taking a corner. No, nah, not not for me. He wasn't the best of them. Yeah, well, yeah, you want him in the box, surely, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, if I, would, if I, would, if I had uh, to say, I'll probably just stick in the box. I've got the height advantage. That's true. Yeah, that's like true. I said, I'm, I'm six foot one, so I'm, I'm quite a tall bloke. So don't, don't don't make a mistake. Remember where you are, Cal. Don't go and punch it in the goal or something. Do you know what I mean? No, come and catch you with your new gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wear his new gloves playing second ball. That's good. That'd be hilarious. Might, that'd that'd might that'd do be the brilliant. Maradona thing. I might have to do the hand of God. That's it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm up to A bit too, bit too much bass on it. Just stick to your hand. You can like carry it in the goal. Totally do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like you said, son. If I was in goal and I put, well, I've actually put, uh, I've got my gloves in my bag because I'm in goal tonight for a little bit. Um, uh, but I, I put some that some of that stuff on. Yeah, I put some of that oh, glove glue on. Oh yeah, that, that was funny yeah. when it, when, I, when you first told like me. Like I said, it, it's so stick. It, it sticks to my hands so much. I literally, you can actually hold it like there for like at least twenty seconds. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and and he's, and Simon told me he did it for a joke. Um, he says, um, do you go to bed with her? And I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, got, he's got it stuck in his head, head, you know what I mean? head on the ball like that. <laughs> oh, definitely give me a wake-up really... call if I had a scratch on my head. Yeah. God. <laughs> who, do you, who do you support, Paul? Never asked you that. Do you, do you know what? Ironically, I don't really support anyone. Oh, no, obviously, no. growing up, my, my brother played for Arsenal in the 80s. Um, yeah. And... Because obviously, brother played for Arsenal. You know, growing up young, I had to support Arsenal. Um, that was that was obviously the club and stuff. And being obviously an East End boy, it's not far. So um, Arsenal. But then obviously he left, and I thought, well, I don't really want to support Arsenal. Can brother don't play for him anymore. Um, and then from then, I just thought, well, I'm shuffling around clubs. So if I supported anyone, I'd be a bit biased and stuff. Um, so I didn't didn't really support anyone. I just like watching football. Just like watching obviously. Yeah. Um, Different styles, different players, um, and stuff. And like I said, look, I've got a couple of sides I don't like, and obviously I want them to lose. But listen, more majority of things, I, I don't support anyone. But you know, you you mess around and, and you take the mic. You know, everyone says, "Oh, you support." I always oh, sort of try and support the sick team that someone else supports to try and give them a little bit of banter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So you can have a bit of a wind up. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, there was, there was, there um, was, there was really just a couple of quick ones. Who do you, who do you guys support? Hang on. Go on, Cap. Um, I'm a Cardiff supporter. Cardiff, are you? I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, a Cardiff supporter. Yeah, I'm Cardiff, so yeah, we're in the championship at the moment. Mm. I actually, ironically, played, um, played at Cardiff when... Um, when it first got opened, the new stadium. So when, when it got, yeah, Cardiff Stadium. It's a fantastic arena. It's breaking up. We there. So Paul comes back. Yeah, you're back now, Paul. Wi Fi keeps breaking up, I think. Yeah, is that yeah, it? Got yeah. Yeah. Got it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm Chelsea. I'm. That's why when you said you scored that goal at Stanford Bridge, I wasn't very happy. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, boy, my, my boy supports Chelsea. He's a, he's a oh, right. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've got a boy that supports Chelsea and the other one supports Man City. 
Can't make it up. Oh, Can't make it up, can you? God, no, not at the moment. Got a bit of rivalry there. So, oh, yeah. yeah. A couple of just quick ones before we go, Paul. Who, who do you think um, looking favourites to win the Euros and who do you think will win the Euros? Oh, no, I see. So, sorry, is that again? It's just, it's just all bust, bust then. Yeah, yeah, no. Who do you think looking like the favourites to win the Euros at the moment, and who do you think will win it? Oh, going off. <laughs> you there? Oh, dear. Yeah, you're back now, Paul. Everyone there? there? Hello? Can you hear us? Wi yeah, you there now? Always, always Wi Fi some, somewhere. Yeah, you're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Got it. Just who, who do you think um, who, who thinks the best team so far in the Euros and who do you think is going to win it? Well, obviously, Italy will probably be there because they've played the two games um, and convincingly. Like, but I, yeah. I watched France the other day um, and they were just powerful. They were good, weren't they? And to be fair, it's, it's, it was the best game so far. Like, France and Germany, too. You look at the midfields against each other, it's just. It's ridiculous. Um, good, good teams. Yeah. But they, France all steamrolled them a little bit, didn't they, really? And that's, and, that, and it was in Germany as well, ironically. But like I said, yeah. the, Italians, the Italians at the moment, they just, they just they just look too good at the moment. They look good. But like I said, mm. they, they've played two games. Listen, we, we could, as, a, as a nation, we could go out tomorrow. And, listen, hopefully it's a cricket score. But if we go and be convinced it'd be 5 or 6 nil, everyone look at us and go, Hang on a minute. We've just beat Croatia. We've beat, you know, come to the East Scotland. We'll we'll look yeah. we'll look as good as maybe Italy and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's. I think in another week we'll start to get an idea about the the sides. I think, but we yeah. we all we always. To be fair, for me, Italy's been a dark horse. Um, I didn't expect them. I've always said, you know, you know, I said France, Belgium, um, possibly Portugal will be my sort of top three. I said, but Italy mm. at the moment, yeah. Looks solid. You there? Uh, what? Yeah, yeah. I said, I said France. I did. I said France. Yeah. You said I? France before the tournament, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just wasn't impressed with them against Germany. Mm. You know, you wasn't no. Okay. N no, because it was an own goal that won them it. It mm. was a. It was. They didn't like earn the win. Yeah, I said they're, they're both goals disallowed, didn't they? They're good finishes, but both both offside. Which, yeah. I think they look strong. I think they was only only in second gear, and that's against a good Germany side, you know. Mm. So, yeah, it's, and who's yours on side? Well, a nice strange one, but I've gone for Spain right at the beginning. Okay, yeah. Um, I just think a side that normally wins here is quite an experienced side, you know. Mm. And I just think Spain's got the experience in there. And it's normally a side that starts off slow and gradually builds their way up, you know? Yeah, I get that. And, um, yeah, I, yeah, I just don't know why. I just got a little feeling about them. Really. It's very, but, very weird. Mm. They've not called up one Madrid player, have they? I know. It's weird. I know, like I'm, that. I'm surprised. Really, really bizarre. But, listen, it's, you know, obviously the manager knows more than what we do. But it's very unusual to see. It's like, you know, Southgate not calling up one Liverpool player or... So, I mean, a, um, yeah. you know, I don't know, like a, you know, Chelsea player. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's bizarre, but like, it is what it is, isn't it? We, we, we only care about ourselves, don't we? Hopefully we, uh, we win the tournament. Yeah, well, I, well, he didn't call up one Cardiff player. What was going on there? Yeah. Oh. oh, is that right? Yeah. There is a Cardiff. There is a cut, and there was a cut, and there is a Cardiff player. There was, and there was, but he's not on loan now. It was Harry Wilson. Mm. Oh yeah, he's, he's Wales, isn't he? Yeah, Harry Wilson is. Yes, he, he played, didn't he? The other night, mm. yeah, last night. Yeah, um, there, no, there was one I was disappointed that wasn't in the Wales squad. That was Will Volks. Oh yeah, yeah. he's a cracking ball. He's, he's a he's a cracking thrower. You know, to throw in from you know from a throw in. Yeah, um, okay. He's cracking. He can throw the ball literally into the whole, like literally across the penalty area. Gives you another option, doesn't it? Exactly. exactly. That's the way yeah. I don't have. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, I'm just checking the time. 
you, you know, got shooting your no, poster. It's fine. I've, I've got another five minutes. Fine. If you if you want to, you want to, yeah. get, you want to get rid of me, it's fine. Okay. No. <laughs> no, I was worried about you because of that. Yeah, so. like, you know, it's only five minutes down the road, so it's no trouble at all. That's right. What do you want a golden boot then, Paul? <sighs> I, I would have said before a tournament Harry Kane, but I, I think you can't look beyond Lukaku at the moment. I think. What, what listen, what he's done mm. at Inter Milan is phenomenal. And then he, even at Man United, he got, he got sick, but he just scored goals. Listen, I'm I'm not overly um, a Lukaku fan because I, I, I think that he can, you know, sometimes the way he plays, I don't like the way he plays. But listen, stats for me, stats don't lie. He scores so many goals. With the, you know, and he's, wherever he's gone, he scores goals. Doesn't matter what level, what club. Yeah. Like, I say he went, he went to West Brom when it, you know, when they've just come up for the Prem and, I think he scored about 15 or 20 goals for him. And it's, you know, and he was younger then. Mm. So he's, listen, he's a handful. He knows where the back of the net is. And I just think when he gets a chance, you know, he's scoring two out of three. He, he, he might miss yeah. one, but he's definitely not missing the next one or, or one after. I just, I just think, I don't know. Yeah. obviously, I don't think De Bruyne's in the squad, is he? I think he's injured, isn't he? Is that right? I think he's, uh, yeah, I think, uh, he, he, yeah, he, um, I know he's he done his eye, didn't he? Yeah, eye yeah. socket. Hmm. And I, I was, yeah, I was, like you know, if De Bruyne was playing, like you, you got one of the best assist guys there, and you, Lukaku's going to score a lot of goals. But listen, I, I just think in the Belgian team, I think they're just going to put it on a plate for him. He's the main man. I think, I think you look mm. at, I think, I think Kane's going to get a, obviously a few next couple of games stuff and getting back up there. And like I say, he's uh, it's between them two. I think. What do you guys reckon? I, I went Lukaku before. Yeah, before the tournament started, I just. I, like you said, he's he's big, strong, gets himself in the right positions, and he can finish. Um, and not only with his feet, he can finish in the air. Do you know, what I mean, all all types of finishing he can he, he's capable yeah. of. And in, a, and in a tournament, you know, you, you don't get loads and loads of chances, so your percentage rate's got to be high. You know? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Cal, what do you reckon? So, um, what for Golden Boot? Yeah. Uh. I, I was going to say Mbappe. Okay. That's not a bad shout. Because he's, he's still young. He's still a cracking player. Yeah, school's yeah, goals. He does. So that's what I'm going to say. That's why I'm going to say Mbappe. But Lukaku is definitely there. How quick did he look against Germany? Would be right. I know. Well, I, think, I, think, I think it was on the break, weren't it? I was just thinking. It reminded me a little bit of when Henri done Carragher, where he just... He just was so sharp and so quick. And I was thinking, uh, oh, who was the centre-half for Germany that was tracking back? Um, uh, Kimmel? Yeah, it could have. No, he could have been. Yeah. Or, or is it the... Um, I can't remember now, but yeah. I think he's done him. But he, luckily, his recovery run did, did stop him sort of thing. But he just... He, the, the pace of him is frightening. Frightening. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's brilliant in bad mm. he's, he's only 22 as well, isn't he, I think? I know. And you think of what he's done so far with PSG, like you say, the experience and, and the goals he scored and the games he's been in, he's only going to get better in his mid twenties onwards. He's, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's going to be frightening. Yeah, same, same, same as same as Haaland for uh, Bristol. Oof. He's yeah. Like, I mean, they, they reckon Chelsea might have got him, don't they? Yeah, I saw that saying about his um, agreed personal terms. Listen, if you don't, if you agree personal terms, you know, and I've got it. It's like Sancho going loads to Man United. Um, and same, I, th I think Harry Kane's spot on to go to Man City. I think that's that's bookie's favourite yeah. to go there. I think, like I say, aguero has gone. They need a striker. Harry Kane said he ain't going to leave England. You reckon? So I can't see him going anywhere else. No, no but, I agree. I think Harry Kane, yeah. Man City. If he signs for Man City, I think that's their league again. I do. Well, not, not Chelsea have had him. Well, I don't I mean. Yeah, I think it could be there now, but I just think Man City just going to be too strong again. I really yeah, think they're good though. Yeah, they're good. To, they're nice to watch, aren't they? Nice on the eye. Yeah, yeah, they are, and he's just got it, got it right there, and he tweaks two or three players every year, doesn't he? Oh yeah, and and that's it. He just knows what to do, doesn't he? So yeah, was... definitely. Is that what you reckon as well? Yeah. Cal? Yeah. What's that? Do you reckon that as well? What yeah. Do you reckon? Yeah, I, I would say that. Yeah, I, I said Chelsea to win it next year. Okay, it's not a bad shout. Yeah, if they get Haaland, that's the thing. Hmm. But if not, I think they'll finish possibly third, fourth. Yeah, 
Yeah, Liverpool should come back as well, shouldn't they? Be yeah, a little bit better now with a few more players. They'll have Van Dijk. Pardon? They'll have Van Dijk back, surely. And that Henderson as well. Uh, Henderson. Yeah, they yeah they'll have they'll have their, their, their majority of their players back. Yeah, so but obviously uh, I think they'll, they'll sign a striker as well. I think. Yeah, they need to sign a new striker because yeah, uh, Wijnaldum's left, doesn't he? Who's in midfield? Mm. Yeah, he's yeah. gone to the PSG. Mm. Yeah, so they need to find probably someone else, don't they? Now they need to find a forward and a midfielder. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think so. I just think they need to mix it up at the top. They, they go, they've had them free there for the last two, three seasons, mm. um, and it can. You know, teams can suss it out a little bit, can't they? So I think they need to mix it up. I, a I, bit, I, so. I think Firmino, um, is it Firmino forward? I don't think he scores anywhere near as much goals he should do. No, I, like, I agree. It's, it's, mm. I've had debates with loads of people with this before, but for me, he's, he's your number nine. You know, you look at other number nines all around the all around the world. They're, they're scoring 15, 20, 25 goals all the time. Firmino's yeah. getting just just over sort of ten, really, isn't he? 12 or 8 yeah. or yeah. say, and I know they're saying he drops off but listen he's, he's, he's the main man at Liverpool he plays all the time down the middle uh, Brazil, we're talking yeah. about Brazilian yeah. striker as well like I just I just expect more personally I think he, he needs to score more goals and I'm surprised they haven't really got someone else in to try and either back up his ideas or get someone in to think Do you know what if we got another guy in here that scores 20 goals because uh, Mane and, and Salah are always going to score 15 to 20 goals each end. yeah and if, and yeah. if you've got another one that's doing that as well, do you know what I mean? That's that's a lot of goals in the season. It is. Yeah, definitely. That's why I think they'll sort of sign another forward. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, he, he, he does sound about him dropping off. Harry Kane drops off, does exactly the same. It's true. Yeah. It's true. There's, there's no, you know, there's, they do the same thing, but Harry Kane scores 25 goals. You know, mm. that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. I agree. Yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. So... I mean, did you want to uh, just mention anything about a charity game, uh, Paul, before you go? Yeah, OK. Yeah, no. So we just set up a, a charity match for the 4th of July for the NHS um, purely because of, you know, in the last 18 months, two years, I think everyone's been affected with it, with um, whether it's been your friends, your family, relatives, um, whoever it's been. And like we said, we just want to try and give as much back as we can. Um, and we're doing a Chatham Town Football Club, which they've agreed to, which is fantastic. Um, I've got sort of some YouTubers, some uh, TikTok uh, stars. I've got ex-footballers, uh, influencers, celebrities, actors, all playing in the match. We're going to, um, it's just going to be like an NHS, NHS day uh, and be catered for them. Do you know what I mean? You know, everything's free for the NHS. Uh, they can come down. We've got tickets for them to give out, which we're doing. And um, yeah. just just try and give back to say thanks, really. We're going to obviously try and do charity, you know, once a, once a year, really. And the first one is for the mm. NHS. And I think, um, like I say, more more stuff will be coming out soon, obviously, on my, my Instagram and stuff. And obviously, you, Simon, got involved now, which is fantastic. Yeah. And I think you've done a tremendous job, mate, I must say. Uh, both you and Thank Jamie you, uh, Groves have been absolutely fantastic. And I think if, if you both didn't get involved, we probably wouldn't have got this far, really. So we, we really appreciate that. Oh, it's, um, it's been awesome. I, I'm really, really looking forward to it. And I say, we try, the, the idea yeah. is that we try and raise £100,000, which is a lot of money. But you know, we we we've obviously getting sponsors and getting businesses, and we just we're just reaching out to anyone. If, it, if there's anyone that's listening, if they want to um, contribute or donate or get involved, please get in touch with obviously myself or Simon or Jamie or the club at, at Chatham Town just to you know to to give up because there's 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 so much there you know to try and raise and try and give because um, you know we don't want to just give it to the NHS. We want to obviously raise that money and, and give it to the the hospital itself. You know, whether it's a a ward, extra beds, um, extra services that they need, so we can see exactly where it is. And it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward. To it. It's going to be a great day, Fourth of July. Yeah, no, it's going, to be, it's going to be brilliant. I mean, we owe the NHS so much. I mean, we really do. So anything that we can give back to them, um, that's just a little dot in the ocean compared to what they've done for us. Do you know what I mean? So mm. um, it'd be great if we can do that. I mean, if if people want to donate anything, even if it's a pound or Ten pound or even more, you can go on my bio on my Instagram or on my TikTok account. It's actually the links actually on my bio on both on Insta and TikTok. Um, just press the link if you can just donate a pound. You know, a pound's better than nothing. And whatever you can do, whatever you can um, help out, that'd be fantastic. And you know, we're saying the target's hundred thousand, but I think you always have to have targets mm -hmm. in life. 
Um, if you don't reach them targets, at least you push yourself as high as you possibly can, you know, and that's and that's what we're that's what we're trying to do. So we will keep pushing. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, no problem. All right, Cal. Right, is that everything? Yeah. I'm, I'm all done, yeah. Right, so thanks for your time, guys. Cal, nice to meet you, mate. And you too, mate. No worries. I'll be looking out on your uh, on your TikTok and your Instagram, seeing what you're doing. My sons talk about you all the time. <laughs> you're a bit of a legend around here. I'm, I'm excited to be a legend everywhere. That's true. That's true. I'm starting to starting to notice that, mate. But yeah, now listen. Um, thanks for your time. Well, thanks for your questions. Thanks, guys. No problem. Yeah. Cheers, Paul. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah, and you. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Right, Cal. Yep. Your your um your screen kept freezing. Did you know? Because my Wi Fi's playing up a bit. Yeah, you can you can hear you, but you you it keeps freezing the screen. So, but yeah, that, it's right. doing the same to Paul as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it's weird, isn't it? This this me normally it's normally my Wi Fi that plays up, and my Wi Fi was all right today. It's weird, isn't it? Don't say that. You'll jinx it. Oh yeah, don't. Mm. Right, I'm gonna come off and do the same thing, Cal. All right then. All right, and I'll speak to you later on. Good luck training tonight. Yeah. And I'll I'll come on live later in um, TikTok, yeah? All right, then. S sounds good. All right, I'll speak to you later. Speak to you later.